Hello and welcome to lecture 32 of Math 1B03. In today's lecture, we're going to be looking at section 5.4 on eigenvectors and linear transformations. So just a warning before we get going, today's lecture, there's a lot of content uh, happening. So I'll try to go as slowly as I can. And let me just kind of give you the setup before we get in, dive into the details. So the last two lectures, we've been looking at diagonalization of a matrix. We've learned how to diagonalize a matrix. So one way, nice way to think about this is it's a nice factorization of a matrix where you can see the eigenvalues and the eigenvectors of your matrix at the same time. Now in today's lecture, we're actually gonna be pulling many different ideas together into this lecture. We're gonna be seeing bases, B coordinates and linear transformations. And we wanna kind of use some of this language to understand the connections between diagonalization and linear transformations. So as I mentioned before, this is probably one of the uh, more theoretical complicated ver uh, uh, lectures in Math 1B03, uh, but it kind of leads into material that would be useful both in Math 2LA3 and Math 2R03. So let me uh, just make myself disappear here and then we'll get on to today's lecture. So this is the setup that we're gonna be looking at. We have a vector space V here. Let me uh, point it out here. We have a vector space V and its dimension is N and it has some sort of basis. And W is a vector space of dimension M with some sort of basis C1. Oh, that should be C1 through CM because bases the number of basis elements is governed by the, the dimension. So there we have th this situation we're looking at. So the vector spaces here can be quite arbitrary. And for my example here that I'm gonna use kind of throughout today's lecture is I'm gonna look at the vector space P2. And in this case, we know what the basis of all polynomials of degree two or less are. They're one, t, and t squared. And w will be p1. And that means that the basis for p1 is one and t. So here we're looking at much more general situation of just kind of arbitrary vector spaces. And we'll be looking at finite dimensional vector spaces. Now, way back in chapter one, we learned about a linear transformation from Rn to Rm. But what we would like is the a notion for a linear transformation between arbitrary vector spaces. So a linear transformation uh, between arbitrary vector spaces, V and W, uh, is a function between these spaces such that the following two facts are true. First of all, when you take the sum of two vectors and stick it into your function, it's the same thing as first sticking the u and the v in the function to get something in w and then adding them in w. And how does the scalar multiplication behave? Well, if you take a vector and scale it by a constant c, it's the same thing as first evaluating the function at u and scaling the resulting vector in w. So this operation here is in the v side and this operation here is on the w side. Okay, so let me give you an example of a linear transformation. Uh, so here is an example given by taking a polynomial like this, so a0 plus a1t plus a2 squared. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna send it to a polynomial degree one, and we're gonna send it to this particular polynomial right here, All right? And so, it, for example, if I had t was equal to three plus eight t plus 10t squared, this polynomial gets sent to eight t plus 20, nope, it should just be eight, uh, eight plus 20t, okay? Now, if you stare at it for a second, you should actually recognize this function, right? This function is just differentiation. We're differentiating, uh, we're differentiating a polynomial. So this is differentiation. Hopefully I spelled differentiation right. Doesn't look quite right, but hopefully you know what I mean there. And this actually happens to be a linear transformation. So you could add two polynomials 
and then take its derivative, or you could take the derivative of the two polynomials and then add them. And the same thing with the scalar multiplication. So we're actually thinking about a calculus function here. Like here we have P2 and P1, so we're looking at vector spaces of polynomials, and our map is given by differentiation, which happens to be a linear transformation. Now, uh, when V and W are Rn, okay, go back to our linear uh, first definition of linear transformation, we prove that there's a matrix A that you can represent the linear transformation as a matrix multiplication. So the question you should be asking yourself is, does something similar hold for general vector spaces? Now, first of all, it, you can't actually replace this map here with a matrix, right? Because you're taking a polynomial and you're sending it to another polynomial. So it wouldn't make sense to take a matrix times a polynomial and get a polynomial. Matrix multiplication only applies to vectors. So we need to kind of think a little bit more creative about this, about how would we get a similar statement for uh, Rn to Rm holding for an arbitrary vector space. So let me kind of rephrase the question before we get to the answer. So what we're going to use is we're going to use the B coordinate information to get this information. So just remember that if you take X inside of V, because we have a basis for B, we can write it uh, X in terms of our basis uniquely, R1 up to Rn times Bn. And then this means that the B coordinate of X is the vector R1 up to Rn. And then similarly, if you take X and W, any vector in W, you can write it as S1 times the first basis element all the way up to S M up to the last basis element. And then that allows you to write X, get the C coordinate of X, which contains all of these coefficients, S1 up to S M. So, our original map here, when we're looking at a linear transformation, it takes whatever these objects are in V to objects, types of objects in W. But at the same time, we can take an object in V and attach to it a vector in Rn, and we can attach a vector in W to a vector in Rm. Okay, so here, just kind of quick recap of a picture about what's going on. We're going to trace through where a particular x can be sent. So we have say that we're given a linear transformation, and I didn't want it to curve it there, uh, uncurve it. So it would take x over to tx, right? That's what the function t does. But at the same time, you can take that x and you can map it to Rn by taking the b coordinate of x. And over here, the tx you can map it to, well, here I'll write it over here so it's a little bigger, you can map it to the C coordinate of that guy. Okay, So we can take our vector and map it over here, and both of these vectors can be mapped down into nice vector spaces, Rn and Rm. And so the question, what we're going to do is we're going to rephrase our question as, as, as follows. What we're doing is we're associating a vector here to over here. And so the question is, is there a matrix M that's describing what's happening at bet between Rn and Rm? So you take the T upstairs, you drop everything downstairs to Rn and Rm by taking the coordinates. And then that really gives you a new function from here to here. And then what is this particular M? So our question is, does there exist a, a matrix M such that you have the following uh, situation going on? We would have Tx, the C coordinate. So you go from here to here to here. Is that the same thing as taking the matrix M and multiplying it by the B coordinate of X. So I can go from here to here using first T and then the C coordinate. And then we want to be able to go down from here, 
from up here to the Rn and then map it across via matrix map, um, multiplication. So we'll take a break here and give you a pause for try to think about what we're doing and then we'll kind of work out the details.